All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> what's up, what's up? Yo, 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 what it do, though? It's the... Welcome to the Danny Brown Show. Uh, fucking no. Welcome, villains from the internet to evil stories with UMD. That's me. Uh, it's episode two. Episode two. Um, go ahead and check out the first one if you haven't. I have, as of this recording, I don't even have it uploaded. I just got it, like, still on my desktop here. Um, so, that's that. Let me give a quick summary again of what this show is, and then I'll probably stop doing that after, like, probably episode four or some shit. Uh, but a quick summary, uh... I like to think of myself as a professional yapper, so I thought it'd be fun to document some stories of my life that involve either people who would be considered evil, uh, or maybe I want to tell a story, talk about a current day topic uh, that is also within the bounds of some evil shit, you know? We're talking evil shit today. Uh, Even worse, we're talking evil politics. Uh, we're talking evil politics today. Um, going to talk about the debate that just recently happened. <laughs> God damn. They're eating. They're eating. I saw this post, what was it, it was like, uh, when a, when a non-binary person, uh, is dressed very, very well today. They're eating, uh, they're eating, they're eating, they're eating. It's my really shitty Trump impression. All right. So yeah, I'm gonna try and fill up an hour today. Again. Evil stories with UMD. First story we have is uh is a story that happened in my own neighborhood my own neck of the woods there's been villainous gangs taking over <laughs> taking over aurora colorado uh now i will say i don't live in aurora uh, I'm over in the Springs area, and, you know, Springs is okay. It's okay at best, is what I'll say. It's much better than the place I lived before, uh, if you've ever heard of Canyon City. Uh, Canyon City, Colorado is, uh, it's pretty much where all the coolest people live. Uh, and by coolest, I mean most fascistic thinking. <laughs> like, uh, white supremacists don't want you to look up the history of Canyon City. I'll put it that way. <laughs> um, I didn't have a choice. I grew up in Canyon City. Moved there when I was like 10-ish, I think maybe 9 uh, my dad just happened to get a uh, like a really good job in that specific city. I don't know why, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm glad we moved there because I wouldn't have the friends that I have today, you know. Um, but we're not here to talk about wholesome friendships or <laughs> Clanion City. We're here to talk about. Venezuelan gangs, apparently, over in Aurora, Colorado. I have an article here that I pulled up from the official press saying, Police deny Venezuela gang has taken over rundown apartment complex in Denver suburb. Huh. Interesting. I thought they were taking over. I thought Venezuelan gangs were murdering American children. On the streets of Aurora. That was my understanding. That being said, I also solely rely on all my information from Facebook. 
uh, or Twitter or Instagram uh, because I'm an independent thinker. I don't think like <laughs> I don't think like other people. So when I hear a story of a gang taking over an apartment complex, you know, I believe it because that's what independent thinking is. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Um, let's see here. S article says, Police in Denver suburb of Aurora say Venezuelan street gang with a small presence in the city it's not take has not taken over a rundown apartment complex, yet the allegation continues to gain steam among conservatives with amplified, and it was amplified by former President Donald Trump in a Wednesday Fox News town hall where he said Venezuelans were taking over the whole town. They're taking over every apartment building. There's no escape. Uh, this is why we need mass immigration. We're going to have the greatest Im immigration. <laughs> oh, man, I wish he said that. I got it fucked up. I got it switched. We're going to have the greatest... Uh, fuck, what is it called? De Deportation. The greatest deportation of Venezuelans and Mexicans. Uh, no country has ever seen. Oh, man. What a cool guy. What a great guy. Um, the uns unsubstantiated fucking... I murdered that word. The allegations gained momentum following last month's uh, dis dissemis dissemination. What the fuck, official press? What's with all these big-ass fucking words? God damn. Sorry. Uh, last month's dissemination of a video or dissemination? Dissemination? Dissemination of a video from a resident in the complex that showed armed men knocking on the apartment door, uh, intensifying fears of the trend de Aragua gang, I probably didn't say that right, was in control of the six building complex. However, city officials indicate the buildings along the two other apartment complexes were run down because of neglect from the property owner, CBZ Management. Aurora is a diverse city that has a long grappled has long grappled with crime and gangs and police say they have so far linked 10 people to the tra Trende Aragua and arrested 6 of them including the suspects in a July attempted ho homicide in a visit to the apartments where the armed men were filmed in Turham, Aurora Police Chief Heather Morris said gang members had not taken over and weren't collecting rent. The remarks came after the mayor said that the criminal elements had taken over some unspecified buildings and were extorting residents. That's fucking cool. What a fucking idiot. Hey, God. Ugh. Oh, I got a lot of phlegm. A lot of phlegm. Never seen so much so much phlegm. We're gonna have the biggest phlegm deportation. Okay, all right, fucking shut the fuck up. Uh, I'm probably gonna do a lot of bad Trump impressions in this pod, so just just get ready for that. Uh, and it's not because I, it's bec it, you know it's not because I hate him and I'm making fun of him. It's because he's actually a long lost relative of mine. Not a lot of people know this, uh, but I am actually like a descendant of Trump. Uh, and that's why my impressions are so good. Um, so yeah, motherfucking just Fox News, our own uh, goddamn uh, 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 ex-president, and multiple conservatives over on fucking Facebook are spreading, spreading a uh, uh, rumor about these gangs, and it's God, it's just so fucking, it's fun, you know, it's fun to observe these people, and all the the stupid little things they get into. I, I, for the past like five years, I've really been like. Uh, what, trying to like rewire my brain uh, 
to just kind of understand people, understand uh, the country that we live in, and ideas, and people on left, people on the right, liberals, conservatives, all these fucking people. Um, and this is one of those moments where it's just like, well, that's kind of funny. That's kind of silly. It's truly evil shit. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's truly evil shit that they do have this power and influence at the same time. Uh, because, you know, now now because of this story, plenty of Venezuelan just residents and normal people just minding their own business are going to be more... Uh, more likely to be harassed or attacked or, you know, whatever the case, because of these fucking stupid rumors, but, you know, that's just what America, that's what makes America so fun, it's just such a, a grand old time over here, um, but yeah, this is the funniest part, is that they say that the building is, is all worn out, and it's, and it's, and it's being neglected because of the gangs that have moved in. The gangs. The local Venezuelan gangs that have taken over. And it's like, alright. <laughs> well, let's see what, 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 what actually materially is happening over there, right? And lo and behold, we have here the city of Aurora. It's already taking legal action against uh, Zev Baumgarten. I guess that's the owner of, uh, he's either the owner of the building or part of CBZ. Uh, but they're suing him for years of neglecting properties and numerous code violations after another building he managed in Aurora was shut down as uninhabitable. Uninhabitable. Hey, uh, I've got this, si like, what, how do you, how do you become a landlord? How is that something you grow up wherever? You grow up wherever and, you know, they tell you you can be whatever you want. You could be whatever you want when you grow up. Who the fuck <laughs> is like, I want to be a landlord. I want to be a property owner. Because that's cool. That's sick. That's where I get a lot of money. Oh, God, these people. I can't fuck with anyone who just wants to make dumb money. Extraordinary large amounts of money. Shut up. That's not original. <laughs> but that's why landlords become landlords is because they want large sums of money. And the best way to do that is to tap in the old housing market. Um, and it's really cool. It's a pretty simple process where, you know, you either build up enough money to buy a little property, uh, or like most things, uh, you inherited money from your fucking folks and, uh, or they give you a fucking house, you know, and, uh, you uh you pitch this idea to to local residents of wherever you're at to be like hey i have housing available i have housing available for whoever can afford it it's at a low low cost of 2 grand a month um you pay all utilities um you have to mow the grass you have to make sure it's well taken care of and all the money that you give me goes right to my Bucati, right to my expensive luxury handbags, goes right to my bank account and I think this is a good process. This is what I wanted to be as growing up as a kid. I, I wanted to be this truly evil, you know? So, some kids are evil. Don't get me wrong. Some kids are evil. But kids that grow up and want to be landlords are more evil than, like, Ted Bundy kids. 
kids who grew up like Ted Bundy. Because <laughs> you, you you think about it, landlords have probably killed more people and have harmed the general public more than a Ted Bundy. If you really think about it. <laughs> I think I'm making a point here. I don't fucking know. Um, God damn. Truly evil shit. Alright, I don't care to talk about this anymore. We'll go ahead and move it on. What other evil things are going on in the world? How about two stupid fucking American liberals who went on a debate stage to try and look good in front of the entire world? It's just an entire platform of evil. Fuck both of these people. <laughs> Holy shit, fuck both these people. Um... You know, I don't know, maybe I should give like a little background of my political understanding. I don't know if that fucking matters or not, but I used to be like a a, a centrist kind of kid, uh, mainly in like high school. At least I kind of thought I was. Um... The first time I've ever really, like, thought about anything was when I, um, there was this, uh, there was this ex I had who lived out in California, uh, and I don't know, uh, I didn't really, like, think much of Trump at the time, I didn't even think much of, like, Hillary at the time, I, you know, Back in 2016, I was like a sophomore in high school, so like, or no, I was a junior. I was a junior in high school, so like, I don't. I was like, I don't fucking know. You know, it. If I had to vote at that time, it'd be solely vibes based. I'd be like, who can I smoke a blunt with? You know, who can I? Who can I? Who? 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 And you know, no. <laughs> First of all, that's a stupid way of thinking uh, uh, of how you should vote. Is who would I, you know, people, I've heard people say, like, I'd have a beer with them. I'd have a beer with J.D. Vance. He seems like a, a down-to-earth, grassroots American who fought for his country. I'd have a beer with him. And it's like, that's cool. That's a, it's a really cool way of thinking. Um, <laughs> fucking, I don't know. But, uh... At that time, I had an ex, and she was super, super liberal, super anti-Trump, and, you know, I was just like, whatever, you know, I don't care. Um, I remember she would go to uh, uh, protests, and she would send me, because we were, did like, long distance, so she would send me, like, videos of her at these protests, giving speeches, like a megaphone and everything, she was like, about it about it you know I was just like it was it was kind of inspiring a little bit you know uh, but then you know, we did have we did butt heads of course because I'm just a at the time and still kind of am just a dipshit kind of guy doesn't really have a lot or at least at the time didn't have a lot to think about when it came to politics and, and and policy and and people's rights you know took some history classes and government classes of course in high school but like you know you just kind of take those classes to get through them it's like i was more about like digital graphic design like i thought that was fun that was a much more fun passion uh to get into but i remember one time her and i got into an argument just because i was like I was like, yeah, he's, you know, Trump's like a, he's bad. He's a bad guy. He's got bad policy and whatnot, but he is kind of funny. I was like, you gotta, you gotta admit he's kind of funny. And I think I had like at around this time had watched like the roast of Donald Trump. And I was like, oh, he can like take a joke. That's cool. You know? 
And my and my ex at the time was just like, no, no, and just like would get mad at me, like, no, he's, how could you, no, he's not fun. Don't even give him that 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 uh, that uh, accolation. Don't even don't even view him as hilarious. And I'm like, okay, well, I think that just shows how not funny you are. <laughs> I was just like, what the fuck do you know? <laughs> And that was pretty much, like, the start. I actually, I can remember an even further back memory, which is kind of funny looking back. I think it was, like, I was literally in, like, fucking maybe fourth grade, sometime in elementary school. And I remember, uh, when, when I was in elementary school, I lived out in Illinois. I wasn't in Colorado yet. So I was out in Illinois, and they gave us, the teachers, for whatever reason, gave us these paper slips right gave us these paper slips and just had like the names of the presidents at the time for the upcoming like 2008 election with uh with with uh who was that that was uh obama and uh was it bush i believe so yeah, because then that would have been Brock's first. I don't fucking know, but it was it was when Obama. I just remember it was Obama because I remember seeing Obama on the ticket, this like really shitty printed out piece of paper with Obama and and the two other candidacies, and they're just like vote, go ahead and vote, and you're like in fourth grade, like what is voting? Who are these people? what's going on <laughs> that was that was that my earliest uh uh doing my american duty and and casting my vote in fourth grade uh i probably voted for the wrong guy because i don't even i don't even recall who i voted for but i just remember getting that little slip of paper and being like what did, what are we doing when's lunch like I want to go to lunch. I don't want to do this. <laughs> um, and you know, yeah, like I said, was probably a, uh, mostly a centrist, left, more left-leaning kind of guy. Uh, but I would have friends who were conservative and whatnot. Um, and then it probably I got a little more radicalized, probably closer to like uh, 2019, 2020, where you know. I was probably watching some more videos about, like, just learning about, like, women's rights and uh, s struggles of black Americans. Uh, mostly in 2020. It definitely definitely was way more radicalized in 2020. Um, uh, 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 after, uh, after all the, like, uh, George Floyd and whatnot. And I believe I told a story in the first podcast where I talk about my aunt and all the lovely things she had to say about Derek Chauvin and my uncle Jay and all the cool things he had to say on the boat. Uh, great people. They definitely played a key role in my radicalization towards the left and what, uh, I don't know. You probably call me a communist now. I don't give a fuck. Um, it's a pretty cool ideology. I don't know if it's considered an ideology, but just, I don't know. I like the way that they think. For the most part, um, it makes sense. There's, you know, like any political party, there's going to be outliers that give the party bad a bad rep. Um, but I think if you truly, truly understand, like, um, the ways of, of Marx and the way of Mao and and these in these guys way back when um you know i still want to learn more about like lenin uh I, I don't know much about him but i know he played a role i mainly have just been like studying up on like some some marks and, and mao for the most part um but that's a side note um but in 2020 yeah i was getting a little more radicalized uh and then like i said these past five years i've really been trying to like construct my brain into a way of thinking where I can communicate 
you know, uh, my thoughts and opinions well enough and, and, and to be open to hearing people because I definitely, for, uh, you know, I would hear people have takes here and there and just shut it down and be like, no, no, we're not doing that. Or I'd tell them to shut up or I'd get insulted or I would, I would insult, you know, and that's just not cool, you know? Uh, uh, you know, there's probably, someone can say something where you can have a genuine reaction of like, what the fuck are you on about? (laughs) You know, there's things like that. They're eating, they're eating, (laughs) they're eating. (laughs) Uh, yeah, be prepared. I'm sure a lot of people's grandfathers are already talking about, uh, fucking Haitian cannibalism going rampant in this country now, but, you know. That's that's the fun of politics. You just get to talk about a bunch of stupid shit sometimes. You want to talk more about like the cool positive parts where we can actually make material change to better the lives of everybody around us and unify. Ultimately, that's like the goal. That's what I believe. But sometimes we get sidetracked and then someone like Trump is just going to pop off on some RFK uh RFK Jr. style conspiracy, uh, truth social Facebook conspiracy theory bullshit. <laughs> it's just like, oh, that's cute. Look, he think he thinks there's like a crazy cannibal situation going on. What a what a sad old man yelling at a cloud. <laughs> um, I'm gonna talk about something fun in the next half of of this podcast i don't want this to be the entire debate i'm gonna i'm gonna tell a story about tripping on acid at the end um but yeah the debate was just fucking it was kind of boring i've uh, you know i was drunk when i when i was listening to it i didn't watch it i just i was listening to it right and uh, there was just so many bad moments on both sides. Um, Kamala was pretty bad when it came to immigration, uh, when it came to Israel-Palestine, you know. Just not looking good. Not very, uh, uh, I don't know. She She's, like, trying to play... She's kind of trying to play centrist almost in a way. She's trying to like gain um, voters from both sides, and that's just kind of dumb. <laughs> like you know, you hear you you hear that, and maybe you think it makes sense to gar- try and garner votes from both sides, but like ultimately, one side has a horrific understanding of immigration and now democrats are also adopting this idea of of mass deportation and immigration and the and and you know what immigrants are doing in the country and all this bullshit they're not immigrants first of all motherfucker those are human beings refugees that come from pretty from places way shittier than any politician has grown up in so they're right off the bat, just neither Trump nor Kamala can can relate to that that simple fact. They don't have a basic understanding of where these people come from and how like just horribly gang ridden it is in places like South America and, and, and Mexico. There are some pretty like bad places uh uh in those areas. I'm not going to say the whole country because that's fucking racist and dumb, but you know, I've read up about how like just the process of trying to get into this country and how like people have just literally almost lost their lives on the way here. And that's just so fucked up. Uh, I remember he- reading, or I can't remember, uh, there was, I was, wa- I was listening to a, 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 a show majority report and they had on somebody who spoke about um how there's like 
hundreds of thousands of people who die and are completely nameless. Uh, they don't belong to any country. They don't belong to any place because they've been pushed uh, out of their homes, pushed out of their, their, their cities and their towns uh, to move to somewhere else because of, you know, whatever gang violence going on or the corruption of the, the government at them and, and, and how there's lots of like, uh, 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 there's like lots of, uh, intermingling when it comes to like government and, and local gangs in certain countries. And that will cause people to get pushed out. Um, and then they try to make it here, uh, and then they die on the way. And that, that, Shit like that just sucks. Uh, but that's the thing. Neither one of these fucking candidates are going to are gonna talk about it like that. Uh, Trump wants to... What is it? De deport like 80 million? Something like that? Uh, excuse me. Like 80 million fucking uh, Mexicans, Latinos in this country. And he was asked on the debate stage. He's like the the uh, the moderator was like how are you gonna fucking do that and then he just gives him a not answer he just d completely goes off on a whole different thing and doesn't answer it and it's like what kind of a, it's like that's his new like wall promise basically back in 2016 he was all about gonna build a wall it's gonna be a great wall it's gonna be an amazing wall it's gonna have snipers and, and no one's getting in and it's gonna be 20,000 feet tall and Mexico's going to pay for it. It's just another like false promise. He has been like so good at lying recently. Like just roll like rolling with it too. Just like lying and then like going with it and not like just I don't know. If he lies like he doesn't think ahead. And that just might be because he's very old and decrepit, you know. But uh Fuck both these people. I don't know. Still. <laughs> what else? What else? What else? Taxes, the economy. I don't really give a fuck about any of that. I really could. I don't know. I don't. I know I, kind of how the economy works, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't really want to give a fuck about the economy. Because from where, from where I come from and what I think, I believe in a like unified state where just economy does not matter and it's not really priority it we prior you want i'm more in favor of policies uh that are more unifying and actually help everybody instead of dividing us or 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 policies that demonize other people uh mainly people of color and it's just, I don't fucking know. I don't give a fuck about the economy. I don't give a fuck about taxes. I know how taxes work. Taxes are basically, this is what taxes are. Taxes are basically when the government says, you bought that item or that banana, and we need to take a percentage of what you pay for it and put it into our military to kill children in other countries. That's basically what taxes are. <laughs> That's what we need, our taxes. That's why we have it put in. Because without it, you know, who's going to who's gonna go murder all those little babies? Who's going to go murder all those little babies? You know, that's our job. We have to do... Okay, sorry. That, gets, that joke's a little morbid. Maybe I'll stop. Um, abortion. They tried to talk about abortion. Um... Kamala popped off here. I do remember she um, definitely was uh, way more like zoned in on the topic. And you would hope so, you know. You would fucking hope this lady would fucking know what she's on about when it comes to abortion. Um, you can only hope that she's going to fucking reinstate Roe v. Wade. But who fucking knows at this point? Who fucking knows? 
I see a lot of people apparently are trying to vote for Jill Stein now too, and that's like also a problem. You know, Jill Stein is basically the like RFK Jr. of the Democratic Party, which is funny because RFK Jr. was a Democrat, then went independent, and then now he endorsed Donald Trump. It's like that guy's just <laughs> that dude's on drugs or some shit. RFK Jr. is such a I, I could do an entire podcast talking about how much I love RFK Jr. because he is like a phenomenon. He is truly a spectacle. He's a full-blown fucking, like, retard, but he's, like, uh, you love him. You just love how fucking wild and dumb he gets. Um, you know. Except for when he's groping his babysitter. That that part's not cool. That's not cool and fun. But, hey, you know. Uh, that's, 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 sometimes that's politics, baby. Sometimes you just gotta... Okay. Anyway. Um... Uh, yeah, Kamala popped off on abortion. Thank God. Thank God. I mean, I don't really. I don't know. I say thank God, but it's just like it was. I mean, more like thank God she actually like fucking actually had something to say and didn't just like I don't know maul it over or whatever. God, this debate would have been insane with Biden again. That just would have been so fucking. The last debate was just torture to watch it was just like really this is where we're at this is where we're at trump and biden again and they're they're jerking each other off about their golf swing really this is what we're doing now holy shit and you hear you'll hear people be like i don't get why i don't get why other countries laugh at us they're laughing at us Either they'll say, I don't get why they're laughing at us, or they'll just be like, they're laughing at us. And it's like, well, yeah, of course they're laughing at us. Uh, our whole country is is an entire joke, and its history is, is pretty fucking funny as well. It's just like, yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> Uh, that just, you know, you'll meet somebody like that and then you can instantly clock in and be like, oh, they don't actually, like, know what's going on. <clears throat> they don't fucking know. Um, topic of environment. What do they say here? Uh, I don't really remember this part of the debate. I'm just reading off an a little PBS article here. It says, Harris accuses Trump of claiming that climate change is a hoax. She also touted investment in a clean energy economy while boosting gas and oil production. That's not how that works. I know she's in favor of fracking. That's what I heard. She apparently was against it and has changed her mind on it. And I saw the clip where she was confronted on that. They were like, why did you flip-flop your opinion on that? And she was like, I have not flip-flopped my opinion on that. Uh, <laughs> I did not do that. I'm speaking. <laughs> it's my Kamala impression. <laughs> we need to frack. Excuse me. I'm speaking. We need to frack. Drill. Baby drill. I believe somebody great once said that. <laughs> His name was Donald Trump. <laughs> Oh, man, they should have just gone up on the stage and try and, like, tongued each other and just see who could... No, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I did watch... Okay, Envi I don't give a fuck about the environment. Both, neither of them give a fuck about it. So there's nothing to really say there. Trump wants more, more disaster, and so does Kamala. It's like, yeah, you're not getting... Sorry, climate change uh changers what are what are people that don't deny climate change Cl uh people who accept reality <laughs> um sorry folks that believe in climate change uh neither candidates on your fucking side and that's just the hardcore hard cold hard what the fuck am i saying that's just the stone cold truth fuck me jesus christ um Oh, I was going to say, uh, I did see Trump and Kamala give a handshake to each other. That was fun to watch. To see him do the hand pull, 
I love when he does that. He does the little hand pull. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Yank. <laughs> so fucking. It's such a weird power move. He literally has done it to everyone though. He, I think he's done it to Putin and Kim Jong Un. It's like it's like his signature almost. You know. I just uh, you know to see a, he you know you see him pull to pull the arm. It makes you wonder if his pull game was just as good as it was on the Epstein flights. <laughs> Hell yeah, baby. You gotta have great pull when it comes to these young women. You know, because they pull you in with their... Their young, tiny, little bodies. And you gotta you gotta pull them in. <laughs> so fucking stupid. How is, how is a pedophile our... Almost got was our president a eh, and is gonna be our president again. How do you, how do people like we know this about him that he's a fucking pedophile, and <laughs> we're like yeah he's got my vote. It's like yeah but he talks shit and he knows how to make business deals so like he's got my vote. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. All right. All right, politics section is over. Thank you for listening. Um, yeah. Um, go and vote. That's my message. Please go and vote. Election day is fucking... When is it? Isn't it in November? Is it next month? In two months. Two more months. Two more months until we can cast our vote, do our thing. Uh, but while well, I'm also on this pedestal, go ahead and vote locally, please. Please fucking vote locally. Um, do what you can in your community to bring forth material change. Big advocate for that. And uh, And if you don't like what I have to say on here, you can suck my dick. You can suck my dick, you can suck my balls, and you can eat my scrum. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and for this last section, I'm going to try and talk about tripping on acid for 17 minutes. God damn. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the first time I ever did acid. Um, acid is cool, it's awesome, and it's fun. But it can also be scary. It can be kind of scary. Um, I think if you do acid in the right environment, it's a really good time. And if you do anything that I'm about to tell you and you're on acid, you're a fucking idiot. Uh, because that's what I am. I'm a fucking idiot. Who does drugs and then tries to hang out with extended family. <laughs> um, so, first time I did acid, I was hanging out with a homie. Uh, shout out Evan. My boy Evan. And him and I were like... Uh, actually, I think he brought it up. He's like, you want to do acid? And I was like, I'm down. I got, like, nothing going on. And he's like, alright, cool. I know somebody. Bet. We go to our local graveyard to make the exchange um we give the cash we get the sheet um i can't remember how much we got i can't remember if we got like four or six tabs it wasn't a lot but you know you only need one tab right so we go back over to his place we're just watching youtube videos watching meme shit took our tab and, oh, shut the fuck up, Windows, you stupid fucking bitch. All right. So we're taking acid. We're watching YouTube videos, we're hanging out, and, like, maybe, like, a good 30, 40 minutes in, uh, you know, we start to feel something. We start to feel a little, like, a, like this kind of, like, kind of uh, uplifty kind of 
feel i don't know at least for me i don't remember how evan said he was feeling but we were like checking i remember we were like checking each other's pupils to be like dude are you high dude are you high <laughs> um so we're watching youtube videos having a good time we're fucking just all out and uh then i get a call and who is it on the phone probably the last person you want to talk to when you're experimenting with psychedelics it's your mom Mom calls up and says, Hey, son. Hello, my son. Um, you're still coming up for dinner, right? You're still going to pick up your brother and come over for dinner? And I forgot, 100% completely forgot that I made those plans. Because uh, that's just how my brain fucking works. I make plans and then I forget about them. Because I'm dumb and have ADD and can't fucking remember shit. And I love it. I, rem I can remember, like, stories and I can remember sp specific things. But, like, like shit that's happened more recently. I think I have a better long-term memory than I do short-term. I think that's how my brain works. I don't fucking know. So, she called, my mom calls me and says that. And I, uh, for whatever reason... You know, I should have been like, no, mom, I'm not feeling good. I'm over at Evans. He's taking care of me. Like, I can't make it. Any excuse would have been fine. But instead, my brain said, go, go do this. You promised. You said you were going to show up for dinner. It's going to be family there. You know, you should go. I like felt guilty. I felt bad. So that's what I did. So just before I started peeking, I tell Evan, I'm like, I gotta go. And he's like, what? I'm like, I gotta go. I got a whole thing. I gotta go see family. I gotta have dinner. And we, I gotta go. And he's like, okay. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> At least I'd imagine that's what he, he thought. He was just like, shit, I'm gonna be all alone on drugs now. You know, felt bad. Felt really bad. I, mean, I don't know if you're going to listen to this. Probably not. But I am I am sorry I did that to you. <laughs> um, so I get in my car and that's when I really start to feel it. Like I really, I'm like holding the steering wheel. I feel the sweat pouring out of the pores of my hands onto the steering wheel. I feel the dirt of the steering wheel. My senses are super heightened. I can hear the nature, the trees, the birds around me. And I was just like, whoa, this is something else. This is not weed. <laughs> remember thinking that time, I'm like, this is not weed. Because I was like, maybe it's kind of like weed where you get a little high. No, it is not like weed. <laughs> but uh, I make it. I make the whole drive. I drove across town. I had to drive across town. Uh, while peaking for the first time ever, uh, not, do not recommend, do not do this. Uh, I am not advocating for this. This is just what my stupid ass did at 18, uh, maybe 19, one of the two. So I go pick up my brother, right? And, uh, I kind of tell him in a way I tell him like, Hey, I'm not like feeling a hundred percent so i'm just like i might need you like as a homie like i just might need a hug at some point <laughs> and he was like oh okay like fucking weirdo i don't know i don't know what he thought but um get to dinner right and say hello to everyone and i'm just sparking <laughs> i'm like you know, just a little more to myself. I'm not really talking that much because I'm just like, I don't want to say something dumb. <laughs> uh. And, uh. And then, like, we're eating food, right? And my mom makes this, like, chopped up chicken thing. I don't know. It's like chicken and, like, just some other stuff. And I'm, like, eating the chicken, and I'm having this crazy, like, thought, memory, flashback, whatever you want to call it, in my head. Well, I'm, like, remembering in high school how I did, like, a, a, 
like a PowerPoint presentation in my government class for a public policy about factory farming. So I'm like thinking about chickens being murdered and like it, I'm hating the taste of the chicken and it makes me want to gag and throw up. So I like only ate like a little bit and like I just didn't eat that night. And then I like had a moment where like my mom's in the bathroom doing her makeup and I walk in and I close the door and I go, mom, this is going to help me. And I just need to let you know right now I'm on acid right now. I just fully cave and admit that I'm on drugs to my mom. <laughs> and her first, the first thing she says to me, the first thing she says, she goes, Jonathan, like super like disappointed. <laughs> But I remember, like, being like, uh, like, you can't have bad vibes. You can't be thinking bad things when you're on acid, you know? it's it's It plays a lot on your emotions and, and, your, the, and how you think because it's, like, heightened. Your, your thoughts and your emotions are heightened when you're, when you're on acid or any psychedelics, right? So I told my mom, I was like, ah, 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 like... A little more, a little more positivity, please. A little, can we, can we be a little, just a little nicer? I forgot I was doing this, and I was supposed to just be hanging out with Evan, and we were gonna do this, but I'm here now, and I'm gonna hang out with y'all. <laughs> and she goes, "Well, are you gonna be okay to go to the haunted house later?" And that's where I really was just like, "Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me." We're going to a haunted house? Fuck. I really didn't think this through. And we did. And then I went to a haunted house tripping fucking balls. Um, but my trip didn't really like... Um, I mean, it lasted a while, I will say. But the thing is, like, the line that we had to get into for the haunted house was literally like an hour so that stressed me out. Like I just felt like we were just in this line forever. Like I felt like I I don't I, I was like I don't remember how we got in this line and I don't and I want to leave it, but I can't because everyone else is in line that I know, like my family and my brother, like I don't want to walk away from them. <laughs> like that would be weird, right? <laughs> I think so. Uh but we wait in this whole ass line and then I just had like one bad moment, really, where maybe two, but I know the one main one, right? Uh, we we go through the whole line, and they give us, and then we get to the front, and they give us a glow stick to like, they're like, this is your glow stick to help you traverse through the 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 haunted house course, because it like starts outside, and you like, we're like walking around around like hay bales and cornfields and shit and then eventually you get to the haunted house um and so my first like moment that i had uh there was like a guy in like a bouncy house uh and we had to walk through it and like i'm trying to like not get scared because i don't know haunted houses can be scary sometimes i was just like like, I've done haunted houses, I've been a part of them, and I know that basically all haunted houses are just, like, local act, uh, local, uh, uh, thespians and, like, acting, uh, or drama kids. Like, local drama kids that just have makeup on and are trying to just spooky a little bit. But I was like, I don't want them to even get me a little bit, you know? <laughs> I don't know why, that's just what my thinking was. So I just, like, was trying to be intimidating, and that, looking back, is kind of dumb and maybe a little mean, but I fucking, like, get in this bouncy castle with this kid, and he's, like, got, like, this fake plastic knife, and he's trying to, he's trying to be all, like, scary and intimidating, and I just do it back to him, I'm like, argh, argh, come at me, argh, get over here, and I'm, like, yelling at him and shit. And then he kind of like backs off a bit and I'm like, yeah, it's what I fucking thought. And I get out <laughs> and then I wait for everyone else to walk through. Um, and then we finally get to the haunted house itself. And this is where, this is where I have my first probably big, big major moment. Uh, Cause there's the first room. 
uh, they have a strobe light going. It's a strobe light. It's a strobe light in a, like, butcher. So there's just, like, hanging meat. All fake and plastic or whatnot. But it's just hanging meat and body parts and whatnot. And I get to the front of it. I just get to, like, the doorway. And I'm just like, fuck this. Like, I hate, I hate, hate strobe lights sober. Hate strobe lights. They just fuck me up. And whoever invented strobe lights needs to die of a seizure, honestly. <laughs> like, you're fucked up for making that. Um, and I'm just looking, I'm like, I can't, like, waltz through here. I can't walk this. I was, in my dumb head, in my dumb fucking high-ass tripping balls brain, I'm, I come up with this idea to just, just power through, like, run, bolt through this room right <laughs> and i i do i end up just running like taking off away from the group just to run through the strobe light room filled with all this fucking fake meat and body parts and there was a moment i had where <laughs> where a like body part like kind of flew out in front of me and i just ended up smacking the absolute shit out of it just like running in ah, bah, ah, and like ran to the next room <clears throat> scared the shit out of me i'm like in a full pant <clears throat> and like i didn't like realize until afterwards that there was actually there was actually an actor there was somebody in that room who was supposed to walk around and i think i i think i fucking hit him with, like, one of the hanging hard plastic body parts. I, like, smacked it into their head or something. But I was so fucking tripped out of my mind that I and scared that I didn't even realize what, what had happened. And, uh... And fucking... That's, that's why if you're gonna take psychedelics, do them with a homie in a nice comfortable place with lots of blankets and pillows and snacks and water and maybe some movies or just bullshit on YouTube. I think that's the best way to go about it. The complete and polar opposite of how I tripped for the first time. And if you're wondering, yes, I did trip afterwards. I tripped multiple times afterwards. Uh, I didn't let that scare me because I ultimately came to the conclusion that like, well, it was my fucking idiot ass idea to tell my mom, yeah, I'll be up. I'll come over and hang out, you know, but I think that will do it. I actually filled the fucking hour this time. I think the first episode was a little shorter and I think I was a little better. I think this one was way better because uh, I wasn't trying to, you know, I was trying to play a video game at first and I think that was kind of dumb. I think that was stupid of me to try and multitask like that. I can't. I can't do that. I have a hard enough time thinking of what I want to say uh, without doing anything and just spitballing like this. But I think it came across way, way better. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and end it right here. Still like a minute 30 left. Thank you for listening. If you like it, give a like. If you want to tell me your horrible political takes in the comments, do it. I will either respond or delete it because that's how I want freedom of speech to be. <laughs> Very limited. Very limited. Um, this has been Evil Stories with UMD. I don't know when I'm going to make another one of these. Thank you for listening and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.